Hey there, my name is Rohit Kumar and today we are going to discuss 10 very important steps which are required for a specific paper formatting. Now, I was reading this particular article. So, the 10 common stylistic mistakes to avoid when writing a research paper. Title is this and I found it on knowledge.com. So, this particular article discusses 10 very authentic steps. So, here first is the vague research questions and the going off topic. So, you should never go off topic because whichever is your uh, research focus you need to stick to that and specifically you need to decide the flow of the paper and step by step you need to move into the direction of conclusion okay second one is the misformatting the paper so you need to be clear about the format of the journal or the conference and strictly you have to follow those guidelines because if the paper is not uh, with respect to the format guidelines then obviously it is not going to get accepted Third thing that you need to use the simple language because if you use the complex language, then it is going to ruin the intended audience mode because it might be the case that the other side readers are not uh, uh, comfortable enough to get the kind of wordings that you have used. You might be an expert researcher, but the other side reader might be a layman. So that's why you need to use the simple but the good enough language. Okay. Fourth one is the poor abstract. So you should not have some uh, kind of very lazy mood uh, written uh, abstract. So you have to be very crisp and clear while writing abstract because abstract is the sole conclusion. Uh, I should not say conclusion because conclusion is a separate section. But uh, abstract gives uh, a kind of first impression to the reader. And if the abstract is good and quite uh, crisp, then obviously it is going to stick the reader and uh, will motivate the reader to go beyond. So that's why the abstract should be very good. Then coming to the next step, so it is the ineffective keywords. So again, you need to put the right keywords uh, which demonstrate the soul of your paper so that the paper came to know that uh, this particular research paper is talking about these keywords means he is going to focus on these particular research areas or the domains. Now, the next one is the disordered or the unsighted floating elements. So there might be a possibility that uh, there are multiple tables, uh, figures, uh, as well as the other type of sources. And if you haven't cited them, means you, if you haven't given the differences, then obviously those are called the unfloated, uh, means the floated or the disordered or unsighted elements. So you need to give the proper citation to each and every element, whether it's a table, figure, or any other thing. Then the unexpanded abbreviation is a common mistake because usually we think that people will go to the respective paper and you'll find the respective full form, but it is not the case. Many times people do expect that you define each and everything in your paper. So it is required also because it's not easy or many times people don't have the access to other documents. So it's always good to define each and every acronym in your paper. Then moving on to the next one, the misformatted uncited, unlisted, or incomplete references. It is a very big mistake and usually people don't give the proper references. So if somebody wants to explore further, how you do the process. So that's why you are supposed to give the full and final reference list so that the people are comfortable enough. If they want to explore more, they can move and they'll feel good. Then the second last is the untranslated metadata or non-English papers. So if you are non, uh, English writer means in English it is your not your native language, then obviously it might be difficult for you, but still you are supposed to give some of the basic details in English so that uh, the other people could get to know the information about your paper. Because English is a kind of global language and that's why you are supposed to do it like that. And the last one is that uh, not proofreading your paper. And it's one of the serious mistakes that people usually do because uh, when they think that paper is already been accepted, no need to proofread it. But there are multiple mistakes. Even after getting paper accepted, if you review it carefully, then you'll find lots of lots of mistakes in your paper. So it's always a good practice to proofread your paper to minimize the chances of uh, uh, already live-in mistakes. So in this way, if you proofread paper once or at least twice, then I think it will be a better practice. So that's all from my side. And uh, I think these 10 mistakes will help you to decide that how to read a paper, how to write a paper, and what sort of things that you need to take care of so that your paper uh, gives or puts a right impression in the mind of your intended audience. Thanks for watching it. And uh, if you didn't like anything, please let us know. Thanks for watching again. Have a learn.